a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. There was like this awesome physics tech crammed into some rather subpar Star Wars games. These are the only games to have ever featured DMM, being Digital Molecular Matter, a cool way of joining hundreds of tiny physics objects together in a way where they can naturally bend and break convincingly. I covered the ins and outs of that in my first video, so for this one let's just dive on into the cool examples. We'll start with level 4. And compared with earlier levels, which were very metallic and robotic in nature, this fourth level of the Force Unleashed is full of very natural looking elements featuring rubbery effects. The developers mentioned what a pain it was to implement all of these different physics systems together, and in this example I can totally understand why, where in parts literally the entire place is made of rubbery bouncy stuff, which must play havoc with the havoc physics engine and all of the pathfinding that the enemies have to do and stuff. It's the little things, like how these giant mushrooms don't just bounce about, but they also interact with this rubbery floor, instead of just lazily passing through it. It's how you can hit one thing which will hit another thing and cause that to bounce. So much effort and processing power has gone into this, which likely the intended player base of this game just blitzed past without ever noticing. But I notice, and it transforms these rather low quality, ancient levels into environments with their own apparent mass and weight. And thanks to all this effort that they put into this game, it still feels sort of cutting edge even by 2025 gaming standards. And all this was done in a game from the PS3 era, back in 2008. And before you say it, no, I don't think this is just a one-off novelty. Throughout this level I was constantly spotting plants jiggling about whenever caught by stray force push attacks or from enemies I was yeeting out of the level, or from the explosive plant bobs which naturally interact with all nearby physics objects when they detonate. All this sadly doesn't stop the core gameplay from being rubbish, and the enemies in this level are particularly unfun to fight against since they block your attacks and cause you to sprawl across the level for way too long. Especially with this hideous room where it's like snakes and ladders where one wrong step sends you plummeting back to the start again. But it is funny when an enemy unintentionally hurls themselves off the side and goes tumbling to their doom, which all looks quite convincing thanks to the other physics system they implemented into the game known as Euphoria. That's the one that's seen in GTA 4 and 5, and hopefully 6 as well. A standout physics object was this weird plant lift, which demonstrates how awesome and fiddly it is to have an entire platform made of wibbly wobbly jelly material, and despite all that enemies can still traverse it surprisingly well. I love these plants here too, where they're already quite wibbly, but attached to them are even wibbly a little bits which go crazy when hit by my force push move. All these little plants everywhere kind of reminds me of those little physics features you find in the Dungeons of Elder Scrolls games, only here the elements are far bigger and rubberier. In this room, although poorly signalled to the player, are these large flippy pinball style tentacles which when electrocuted cause them to flick across the level, yeeting all enemies in their path. And in this example slapping this large enemy across the arse rather harshly. So the developers definitely did try to make these physics features a core part of the experience in quite a few different experimental ways. In this level I found a few of these awesome claw things where once you pull the claw away you're left with the fleshy base underneath which you can then hack apart. Sadly they last for like 2 seconds before fading out, and my attacks on them were often interrupted by locking onto nearby enemies who just seemed to randomly spawn all over the place. Near the end of the level is this boss sequence, and the physics don't let up. The entire platform is a large fleshy floor that ripples about and causes all enemies stood on it to topple over, and there are these bones here which can be smashed up but it's hard to appreciate all this because I'm too busy fighting to be able to analyse it. But yeah, all in all this level is still one of the most physics-y base that I've ever seen, so well done Force Unleashed. The next level starts a treat, with you surrounded by these beautiful glass panels. Sadly the room is full of poison gas, but once that's disabled I could then take my time to break these at my own pace, and I had a smashing time. If you're still asking what's so special about this glass, for me it's how the broken chunks still have some degree of elasticity, malleability and plasticity to them, which can result in further destruction and that's what makes the physics in this game so special to me. These aren't just physics objects, they're physics objects that are all connected to each other convincingly. The following room I'm greeted to yet more smashable airlock windows which do a good job of sucking the enemies off for me. I covered these extensively in my previous video but in this level there are a bunch of bendable doors. Though a high point for me was in this room, where unbeknownst to me this walkway supported physics, and at some point it randomly collapsed and caused the stormtroopers stood on top of it to fall off. 
and shortly after that high point, a low point, which I think nicely shows what's wrong with the combat in this game and just how infuriating the timings of getting knocked down can be. Fortunately, this level was incredibly short, and the next had a bunch of cool new stuff to experience. I welcome these little people who are perfect for tossing about and for showcasing the bendy railing effects in this game. Yes, every railing in this level is bendable. About half the PS3's RAM is probably going on this effect, so you'd better appreciate it. This moment here was particularly magical to me, where a collision caused a railing to wobble but not really to deform. Almost like the physics are always active on these things, but put up considerable resistance to impacts. This is definitely one of those things I know I'll quickly take for granted, but finding a bent railing somewhere and knowing your previous actions have in some way resulted in it still feel quite satisfying and wholesome. I bet people felt the same way when video games first supported decals that didn't just fade away. This big dangling chain thing glitched out, going mental and vibrating about all over the place. Now with DMM it was apparently a problem if chunks of the stuff travelled too far away from the source, so they had to be correctly cordoned off and such to prevent game crashes. But this here I suspect is just basic havoc physics all attached to each other, though still cool for such an irrelevant object to feature this degree of physics. These pipes were also great, breaking open and spewing their contents about. Really, I think a lot of the time I found the bending in this game to be more impressive than the breaking. I didn't even mind having to replay a segment of this game just because I used a guy I was supposed to protect as a projectile. I do love to play with an interactive nozzle that has foamy stuff shooting out at the end, especially when the hose itself feels rather stiff, like you can twist it into weird angles and it'll remain in that state for a while. And again it serves a gameplay purpose because you can use this jet to freeze enemies. Again combining the physics in this game into the gameplay experience. It's hard to tell because the game is so janky to interact with, but it does feel like the frozen bodies of enemies will break apart where they're sliced with a lightsaber. This being a family friendly game I imagine they wouldn't want it looking too visceral. Until the sequel where they're fine with you slicing enemies in half and stuff. These walker things I think were trying to use physics to fight me, but maybe because I've used the 60fps patch on this game they're bugging out. What a shame, it's not like these enemies are very fun to fight anyway. One jujitsu move later and it's on to the next level. And this one sees the return of many of the breakable features first seen in the intro chapter of this game when you're controlling Darth Vader. And it also throws in some incredibly large and bendy trees into the mix. These things put even the giant mushrooms from earlier in the game to shame with their bulk and wobbliness. You bet the trees on this planet experienced an unprecedented amount of boulder abuse at the hands of Starkiller, which I have to say is a name that's growing on me. These trees are wonderfully unnecessary. And the developers often put several of them close together, allowing you to wibble a huge number of branches about in one fell swoop, all colliding with each other and bouncing off each other extremely convincingly, if trees are made of rubber, which they might be on this planet. There are also tree stumps you can strip the bark from, which I'd like a lot more if they were interactive with my lightsaber, but I guess you can't have everything, even if you are called Star Killer. The game presents huge doors which even your force push isn't powerful enough to bend, but fortunately the huge boulders in this level can and it made me feel truly powerful to lob these mothers at these mother effin doors. This one I deliberately opened the wrong way because I'm a bad boy, and this is a novelty for me when I'm used to scripted scenes and predictable pre-scripted deformation. Look at this thing! They didn't have to bother making this all physics-y and bendable or bouncy when struck with a lightsaber. But they did, and that's to be commended. Some quality Empire engineering right there. I just wouldn't want to be the guy who has to straighten it out again. There's this room full of artifacts, which I'm sure must have been created as a physics showcase of some sort, early in the development of this game. You can cut the metal beams apart with your lightsaber, or bend them using your force powers, and the glass cases shatter nicely, even having the tops of them fall once the glass walls beneath them have given way. Next gen. Let's take some time out just to enjoy the physics in this room, with some help from this Wookiee. I'm going to call him… Three Clicks Philip. Watch him demonstrate the euphoria physics as I force choke him up into the air. There we go, we'll just place him out of harm's reach for now, right up there. Watch how this glass shatters realistically beneath him. Oh sorry Three Clicks Philip. Now watch how realistically the rest of this glass breaks. 
showering the area and anything hairy within the vicinity with millions of shards of glass. The Euphoria animation physics engine should let Three Clicks Philip grab hold of this giant fish head, but it seems like he doesn't want to. His loss, our gain. Oh well, didn't need him anyway. Look at all this broken glass! Broken windows are a funny one, because it looks right, doesn't it? And I know it's right. How do I know it's right? Well, because every Friday night since Andor ended, I like to watch the end of Rogue One and cry as the dramatic music plays. It's a perfect bit of cinema, and a welcome change from the decades I've spent crying every Friday night watching the end bit of Kroll, where everybody dies, which, funnily enough, was a rip-off of the original Star Wars movie. Funny how these things happen, isn't it? And yes, that is a young Liam Neeson. But here's the thing. I like to start my weekly viewing session of Rogue One just a little bit earlier on to be able to enjoy this other perfect bit of cinema, 1 hour 49 minutes and 11 seconds in, where they shoot out this window. Look familiar? Yeah. And when I'm there, blubbering through teary eyes, I appreciate how much thought went into this one shot right here. Having now viewed this sequence dozens of times, I might be overthinking things a bit, but it's just the way it's framed, the way it lingers on the broken glass as it falls down into the void beyond. Evidently, the set this was filmed in wasn't this tall, so this must be a digital glass rendition, using a more sophisticated but spiritually similar rendering method to the DMM scene in this game. I really do feel like I have a strong connection with the team behind this movie and believe with all my heart that this long panning shot is the product from genuine fans of the Force Unleashed DMM tech. And this dinosaur's face is satisfyingly morphable as well. To demonstrate this, I put on a bit of a puppet show. Subscribe! Smash that like button. Comment, may the force be with you if you've reached this far. And th the best bit of this level, though, in my opinion, are these wooden huts atop the metal stilts. And the game gives you ample numbers of stormtroopers, boulders, and Wookiees to yeet at these, breaking off the wooden panels, which collapse and splinter very nicely. But check this out a heavy boulder can even morph the metal stilts that these things are sat on. Isn't that beautiful? And also very unnecessary. But beautiful. For me, it's the way these different materials interact that constantly impresses me. You'd expect different objects to just pass through each other to save on processing power. Especially because of all the people who played this game, it's probably only me who bothered smashing them apart like this. As an example of how different things interact with each other, look at how you can jam this bendy metal cable in this door, and then it will stop that door from being closed. Proof that all of this is physics based and not pre scripted in the slightest. It's just a shame he can't use this electrical thing to shock the Wookiee in the cell, and he must wonder what the hell I'm doing, but if he knew the game he was in, I think even he would appreciate it. The level ends with a really unfun fight. So while I struggle with this, I'd like to say thank you for coming to my DMM talk, and if you'd like to see more of this sort of content, then let me know. I could do this all day.